Now to the latest on the fight against Ebola. We mentioned last hour that Dr. Craig Spencer is in serious but stable condition at Bellevue Hospital in New York. And as many as nine states are ordering mandatory quarantines for people exposed to the virus. But when it comes to our military serving in Ebola-afflicted countries, the White House House has given us no clear plan, quite frankly. Take a listen to Fox News's Ed Henry speaking with Press Secretary Josh Ernest yesterday. Will the Commander in Chief send U.S. troops basically into the hot zone without a policy on, on when they come home, whether or not they're in quarantine? How could that have not been decided before? Because uh, what we are seeing here, Ed, is we are seeing this administration put in place the policies that we believe are necessary to protect the American people and to protect the American troops. Uh, and we're going to let science drive that process. Uh, and as soon as we have a, a policy to announce on this, we'll let you know. We're going to let science drive this process. All right, we've got former fighter pilot and Fox News correspondent Leah Gabriel joining us. Todd is still on set as well. Leah, I want to get to you first on this. This is a very important question, and you just heard Ed Henry pressing Josh Ernest on this, and really, in my opinion, didn't get an answer. Here, the United States, the president, sent our troops over into harm's way, into the hot zone for Ebola, mm -hmm. to care for these Ebola victims, yet can't detail a clear strategy on how to bring them back safely into this country. I think it's great to see Ed pressing this issue, you know, on the White House. That being said, though, I think this is something that's really can be a military decision. I don't think the White House needs to make a decision as to what's going to be best for our troops when we send them into, you know, to conduct this type of operation. The military is set up to handle this kind of situation. And I quite honestly don't think you need to know before they're going into the situation whether or not they're going to be quarantined when but they return. That, I mean, I believe that defense, the Secretary of Defense has to eventually sign off on this. I mean, we know that the Army made a decision yesterday. It was breaking news to quarantine anybody coming back for 21 days. But we don't have, you know, there's not an umbrella decision on how to handle uh, the troops that we have sent over there. And that's something that I'm sure the military is taking a look at. You know, the, the Army Chief of Staff went ahead and leaned forward on this and decided this is what we're going to do with our troops. But when you think about it, you know, the, the question isn't, are we going to send them into harm's way? Okay, they decided to do that to try to help the situation mm -hmm. there. So this quarantine isn't something that protects them. It's just a decision when they come back. So I don't think that they needed to make the decision. I think the Army stepped forward and said, hey, you know what, out of an abundance of caution, these are people who have not been exposed to people who were sick. These are people who are over there kind of establishing structures and assessing the environment, getting set up to be able to handle and to be able to help the situation. But, you know, basically the Army is saying we don't want the family members, the community members, other people in the military to be put at any potential risk. In the military, we can do this. We're a segment of society where people sign up to do a job and they, they subject themselves to these rules. So they're saying we're just going to have an abundance of caution. We're going to put these guys in observation. We're going to separate them. They're going to continue to work just like they would if they were on deployment because the military can do it logistically and they can do it because of the standards that they can set. And I think it's smart. But this goes back to the to, to the lack of leadership and decision making coming from uh, the government oh, yeah. level on all this. That's what's been so difficult and so misleading. Well, what is it that the White House doesn't get here? I mean, if anything, we're not talking about martial law. We're talking about actually taking soldiers or anybody that's coming back from that area, putting them through a three week quarantine before they're welcome back into the community. Should the troops have gone over there in the first place? I think so. I mean, why not? I mean, you, it, what I understand in that region, it's not just a hot zone for the for the uh, the uh, And the, the idea crisis. was to stop it there before it comes here. But the violence that's taken place as well, you have to have some sense of control, and therefore if you can get control, then you can control this uh, this epidemic. Here's the thing, though. Our soldiers are over there. You need to keep them safe, and you brought it up best when you bring them back into the military community. You want to make sure you're not impacting our military community here in the homeland, and that's what I don't understand with the White House. God, there's a no, new Ebola czar. I but know. everybody this morning and yesterday and the yeah. day before said, where is he? Yeah. You know, I mean, we really haven't heard from him much. That being said, I, I, I do say, I, you know, I will say that I hate to see the, mic, the military micromanage. The commanders of the military do an excellent job. They're very smart about to how to handle their troops. You know, our military, they are ambassadors within communities around the world, and the military knows how to handle it. I think it's good for military commanders to be stepping up and making those decisions for our military. And you're saying the military is happy to commit to these decisions once they're made because this is what they signed up for. 
I will not say that they're happy to. I can guarantee <laughs> you that there are grumblings, people who want to see their families, people who want to get out and you know be back in, in their hometown. That being said, yes, when I signed up for the military, when they signed up for the military, we all understand we are subjecting ourselves to a different set of rules, and that's what we do. So, Leah, great to have you here this morning. And I always like to talk about your intelligence background as well, because that's such a significant part of who you are, in addition to being a, uh, having been a fighter pilot and in the, serving in the Navy for 12 years. Uh, significant level of experience. We are the theme sort of today. We've been talking to Todd about it one week out from midterms. What is the morale like in the military as we do approach yet another benchmark for our elections in the United States? You know, I think the morale in the military is is kind of what it's been for the past few years. You know, the, one of the big challenges that the military is facing right now are those sequestration cuts. Yep. Um, if you're familiar with those, you know, cutting uh, the military yeah. was already going to be cutting 500 billion over the next 10 years, then 450 billion. So there's a lot of cuts. It makes it very difficult for the military to continue to conduct their operations and to and to really be trained to continue to be the best in the world to handle situations around the globe that we have to handle. So I think that that the situation with the budget and not even having passed a budget for this year still is something that is definitely not a morale booster within the military. You know, as far as the elections go, I think, you know, a lot of people in the military kind of try to stay away from the political yeah. side of things. That's a brilliant point, the sequestration, because that is something that we don't talk about anymore. And you have to wonder with what happens the next Tuesday. Nobody's even campaigning on that issue right now. And so what's going to happen going for the following two years? And you're right, we haven't reached that balanced budget. So yeah. what can we expect, especially if you have a GOP-controlled Congress, what can you expect going forward for the final two years? You know, it could actually get worse. I'm always asking Todd when he shows up what his weekend was like. You ask Leah, and she's like, where'd you fly your plane this weekend? <laughs> you, know, you follow Leah on Twitter. She takes like a day trip to Nantucket. It's like amazing. <laughs> no, it's great to have you here, Leah. Thanks for having me. All right. Uh, Todd